Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsession will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dork down for a while. Hi, it's Jackie Cation. Welcome back to the Dork Forest. That's right, you know the websites, JackieCation.com, DorkForest.com. You just listen to Mike Rickberg sing the intro song. He'll sing again at the end. Patrick Brady's going to fix this audio. Vilmos fixes the websites. There is merch at JackieCation.com and DorkForest.com. There's T-shirts, there's CDs, there's a donation button. Knock yourselves out, Americans. And uh, uh, and uh, those of other nations as well. And so uh, feel free to do that. There are magnets. I have some magnets left if you just want a magnet or a patch, a ranger patch. Uh, donate about uh, two bucks for a magnet, five bucks for a patch, and uh, just use the donation button and then write me an email in it. Though There's a note section. Section. It's a fascinating long tale. Anyway, sitting across from me, a woman I met uh, at the Aspen Comedy Festival in 1996, and then we saw each other at the Montreal Comedy Festival in 2003. Uh, welcome to the program, Sue Costello. Hello, and thanks for having me. Oh, no problem. What are you doing in L.A.? You're just here to run up the flagpole, see if anybody just visiting? I'm just showing my face and being like, do you like me? Do you want to hire me? Do you like me? <laughs> That's, I go to New York once a year for the same thing. Remember this? Remember this face? Anything? No? No, I'm good. No, I'm good. Just check it in. Just check it in. Make sure I still got it. <laughs> exactly. So, um, yeah. And so we, last time we saw each other was 2003. I'm going to put you on the spot. Because we're on the same side of this story. Okay. Remember the remember the dinner with S- with Judy Gold and Aisha Tyler I, and Maria Bamford. Yeah, I only remember Aisha. You don't remember Judy Gold and Maria Bamford and myself? Were they fight? No, I remember you. Yeah. But were they? Did they there fight? Were five of us. No, no. The five of us all went out to dinner. We went to that beautiful restaurant. That I remember beautiful exactly restaurant. where it was. The I food had was lobster. Delicious. Yes, <laughs> we lived. We were very fancy. <laughs> we were very fancy. I was sitting next to Aisha. And I said, I'm getting the lobster because I want lobster right now. And she goes, oh, yeah, me too. And then um, Maria ate like uh, a leaf and then yes. uh, so half a salad, her. right? Yes. Probably got a Diet Coke or a glass of water. Mm-hmm. Had to leave early. Judy Gold ordered a $200 bottle of wine. She did. Remember that? <laughs> no, it's so oh, funny. Here's my oh, favorite. the reason why I don't remember it, this is why. It's Have no you offense blocking? to you. No, the reason why I don't remember it is because that was the weekend that my boyfriend that I lived with for eight years That's got me right. into the Montreal Comedy Festival so that he could move out on me while I was away for the weekend. So while we were having dinner, using his powers up. for uh, evil, not good. <laughs> yes, really Weirdly bad. Enough, really so that bad. he could move himself out of the apartment? Yes, or? without me knowing. He told me, first of all, his brother was getting married and he told me some story like that the rehearsal dinner was going to be that Friday night so he couldn't come to Montreal, which I don't know why I bought it. I did. Whatever. Because why would you think? Why would I you think? I would never think who, that somebody would, would ever that do that. Right. right. And so I went to Montreal and I wasn't even on any of the main shows at that. He like got me in, pulled a favor and got me on like the shitty shows too. <laughs> this is the weirdest. I'm so sorry I brought it up now. <laughs> okay. But I just want you to know I don't. 10 years ago. I, I don't not remember it because of you. It's probably because when I got home. When you got home, and you didn't find out until you came back from Montreal to New York City? Well, I came home on Sunday, and he was acting really weird. No, he acted kind of regular, and it didn't. I didn't see anything different in the apartment. Like, his bike was still seat. Like, he used to ride right. his bike in the apartment, so it still looked normal. And then uh, the next night, day, I went and watched him play baseball or softball, and then he came home, and he was like... He started acting crazy. He's like, I can't do that. I need to be alone. He started screaming. I need to be alone. I need to be alone. And, <laughs> and I was like, like, okay. I was like, okay, do you mean now or do you mean like forever? forever? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Thinking I was talking logically like, all right, right. what are we going to do? But he, but he had screwed himself up into like this weird place of it's got to be done while she's gone. And then when my, she crazy. comes back, I'm going to have to talk to her about and I don't want to. And so then he had to act all crazy about <laughs> crazy, it. Crazy, like of punching just... himself in the head, literally. Like, I was <sighs> like, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, he's like, I said, well, do you have to get your own apartment? And he said something like, uh, what would you do if I told you I already got one? <laughs> and my whole heart sunk. And I was well, like, your heart what? sunk. But yeah, I guess you I guess I would go, oh. Well, that hurts my feelings, but I guess you're done then, right? <laughs> yeah. Just how? But it took a minute for it to even register. I didn't even know what he was talking about. He's like, I signed a lease. I'm like, what? Because we lived together yeah. in the apartment. It wasn't With like... With a lease. Yes. Yeah. We had our own lease. <laughs> 
<laughs> boo. I boo that. I also boo uh, my friend who uh, broke up with her husband via Facebook. Oh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Husband. Two this kids. This is your friend. So you, you, this is my friend of good. 25 years. And, and so no. I uh, had a hard time talking to her for a couple of years. Yeah. Uh, and then she just came to visit and we had a lovely day together. <laughs> and I was like, well, I guess you didn't betray me. Right. And we've been friends for 20 years, so I don't know how to not hang out with you and laugh at your hilarity, because she is very funny. Yes. And, and there's also a part of me that's like, I would never do that to somebody, but I don't know what goes on with people. Right. Maybe that's what they, I don't know. It's just not right. the way that I could live, but I also don't want to be, I try not to let other people's actions make me become like the actions. Right. Right. You got, yeah, you totally have to separate from the actions, right? Because otherwise I would just be so mad forever and just have right, no right. faith it, in humanity. Well, and it breaks up, <laughs> it breaks up your day. You know, think about how much freedom, free, how, how much free time you have in your day when you're not all being mad. Yes. Yeah, I don't have time for it. Uh, I just had a, a little <laughs> tiny stable confrontations with a booker who um, I had to cancel, mm -hmm. but he had never signed the contract and hadn't responded to me since July 2nd, and it is today, uh, September 26th. And when's the gig? The gig, the gig isn't for another six months. Oh, whatever. Who is right, this guy? Let me call him. Right. Well, the thing is, is, is he went into, I just said, hey, man, you never responded to the... To the con, I, I, I was, I called him because I thought, well, this is the human thing to do, right? Because mm -hmm. this is what you like. This is your, your, your dorkdom is you want to make the world better, right? Yes, I so want to make it. I, I and you I just, still do, no matter how mean you are to me. Like literally, like my boyfriend, my first boyfriend, like literally threw me down a flight of stairs, and I like brushed myself off, and I was like, "Who's next? <laughs> <laughs> Who's next?" That might not have been. <laughs> That might have been something else. <laughs> Who's anybody else want to take a swing at this? Is this something? No, no. I mean, like it's all right. He didn't ruin my whole view of men, is what I meant. Oh right. Oh well, and, and b because that's another thing. Because the best revenge when you get raped or something horrible happens to you is to find someone who won't. Right. <laughs> the or best to order to find happy, yeah, to yeah, not to like that happily. action. Like I said, to not let that action, which is, I mean, that rape is a very serious thing, but a lot, a lot of the way that people heal from that is to not let that actual one event define who they are exactly which is and and the same with violence and mm -hmm. the same with um you know any number of horrible things that happen you're just like well uh, i had a bad time at that baseball game let's let's trivialize it completely and say <laughs> i will well, never go to a baseball game because somebody's I, gonna be blogging about us jackie and sue are not funny jackie and sue are to baseball. E <laughs> equating these two horrible things and uh i'm not saying that baseball does not need to be equated with rape <laughs> it's boring no uh i do not enjoy baseball but that doesn't mean that it can't be done right i love baseball I'm do a you red love sox baseball fan. oh my god i'm a red sox fan yeah I had Greg Proops on an episode where he talked about baseball, knowing that I can't watch a game, uh, but I don't, I don't enjoy sporting events. Nothing? No, no. Mm. I get, I, I like them for a minute and then I'm like, did someone win? And then I'm done. I used I'm to done. not like them because I couldn't tolerate that somebody had to be second. Oh, look at, look at how sweet you are. I couldn't tolerate it. It's a beautiful, you were like, why does someone have to lose? Why? Why is that happening? It. it would make me so sad. I always root for the team who's losing. Yeah, the underdog. Yeah, because, right. uh, but the, like, uh, the longest of any sport that I've ever watched is, uh, American football. Mm -hmm. That one I'll, I can almost watch an entire game. Uh, mostly because I think of the Packers and I was weaned on in Wisconsin right. and the Packers and blah, blah, and it's blah. It's just in your blood. Yeah. Well, I guess. And then, and, but I care about it more than I care about anything else right. and sport wise. Basketball. I love basketball. People love basketball. What love do you love it. about basketball? That it's just a ball. That that's all it is, is a ball and a, a ball net, and a and net that's and that's it. it. And these guys are so athletic and so talented and they don't need a lot of money to, to do it. Oh yeah. Hockey, you need a lot of money when oh, you're right, growing right, up. Oh, right, right, because there's not a lot of gear. Right. You can, so poor people can yes. actually play ba yes. basketball. <laughs> that is neat. Yes. So I really a, am a dorky right, right. humanitarian. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, but it's nice because with baseball, you need gloves or you need a, mm -hmm. you know, you need a little bit more to mm -hmm. bat and a ball, but, mm -hmm. but maybe not. Maybe you can catch it without, but, um, but basketball, they could have one basketball and go down to any public basketball court, even if they didn't, even if they even if it doesn't have a net. Nets. Yeah, yeah. Even if it or didn't the, have a net. If it was just a hoop. And so there's like how many guys can play with one ball. So you didn't need a lot of money for it. Yeah, that is great. So is that, but so. That draws you to basketball initially, yeah. and then you watch the game and you say to yourself, "Look at these how athletic these guys are." I love the to get competitiveness. To I love how patient. I love that's why I like boxing is very violent. But I also like the idea that boxing is getting hit. Whoever can get hit and hit the least. 
Oh, like, I they... always thought it was about hitting, but right. it's really whoever can like can dodge other, best, yeah, and whoever can make the other guy run the most and oh. wear him down the most. And I love the idea of how in the ring they have to maintain their grace and their presence and handle their body. And same thing with tennis. Like I love tennis too for the same reason. Like under that kind of pressure, right. there's nobody else on the on that in, in that ring with them. There's nobody else on the court with them. They can have girlfriends, boyfriends, family, right. coaches. But when it comes down time to it, and it's I associate one on that one. with my stand up. It's a lot like stand up yeah. in the way that it's just one person. SueCostello.com, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, and Sue Costello on Twitter and Facebook and all of these things, right? Yes. So, yeah. But I want to hear Boxing the story about lot. the guy. I don't want to forget about that because I want to hear about the booker. Because what, what about probably... the fact that, uh, uh, Judy Gold said, let's split the, the check. Oh, I'm not. Five ways. <laughs> Now, let me tell you something. If I didn't have such a traumatic weekend, I would have remembered that in a happy. (laughs) The hilarious thing to me, because I think about this story every time your name comes up, because it's such a New York thing to do, because neither of us drank at this thing, and and neither did Maria. Right. So her and Aisha split like a billion dollar bottle of wine. And so Judy's like, let's just split it five ways, 90 bucks each. And so I... Maria's gone. I have to pay $180. Oh, no. And we, and then those two both have sets or they're partying together or they've, uh, they've gone off to roll around in a Scrooge McDuck pile of money. And, um, <laughs> who knows what they're doing? Cause Aisha that time, and I, I haven't she mentioned was successful this. at that time, well, right? She, uh, and, well, she, she is now, I, but I mean, at that time she was too. But I think she had just, hit, it was after Talk Soup, but, but she had just hit with the six episode arc in Friends. Yes. That's what it was. So, uh, and Judy Gold had at one point talked about how her wife was a doctor and made right. a gajillion dollars a year. And then, Ju- and then, and as much as Judy Gold cracks me up. So anyway, and Aisha didn't even notice. I know that she didn't notice. No. And so, and, and neither, no, neither of us said anything. Mm-hmm. And then we get into the car because you and I took the van back to the hotel and we get in the van and you turn to me and you said, why didn't you say anything? Why didn't I say anything? I was blaming you. Yeah. And I said, oh. well, why didn't you say anything? And you said, yeah, but why didn't you say? Oh my gosh, that was like a dork moment. I wish we had that on video, me and you well, like blaming each other because right. we were so nervous. Right, and my favorite line is said, you're more obnoxious than I am. You said that to me? You said that to no, me. No, come on, no, you, I did? You totally did. Maybe I thought you were more out, well, because yeah, they're tall. Well, Aisha be, and Judy are very tall too. They're very it's, tall. Right? And so I had, but I, and I said, well, you're not the one who has to go to Maria Bamford and ask her for $90 oh, no. for half a salad. Oh, no. And so that night I go up to Maria and I was like, Hey, uh, and I tell her what happens. And I'm like, Hey, can I get uh, like 40 bucks from you? Oh. Would that be all right? And Maria looks at me and she goes, Jackie, I wouldn't have said a word, not a word. Here's $90. Oh yeah. See? Yeah. So it was amazing. Yeah. yeah. But it's, uh, but that's my point is that, um, cause I'm not, I, I, I'm like you, or I'm, I'm not afraid. I'm, I don't like confrontation, right. but when, like when the booker guy today, he was completely insane. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, you can't be insane at me. Right. I, that's actually not okay. Right. And he tried to guilt me. He was like, because he hadn't sent the contract. And the contract says that either one of us can cancel it up to three months before the show. Right. Right. And so, anyways, regardless, whoever's wrong, right, contract or nothing, you cannot talk to me like that. Period. Right. 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 So he said, what was the first thing he said was uh, when I when I said, hey, um. You know, I never did get that contract from you. How's it going? And because he goes, how's it going? I said, I- I'm good. I never got that contract from you. How are you doing? And he goes, oh, I'm good. Yeah, I never. Uh... And he had responded to other emails, but never the one with the contract. And he goes, well, I didn't. Uh... Yeah, I didn't get it. I never got that contract. And I was like, I have three emails between us. And I said, I guess I can send you the thread. And he's like, yeah, yeah, do that. Do that. Uh, and I said, well, I got to cancel because I got a new offer from somebody who has a contract. <laughs> And, uh, and it's all good and it's exactly the same. It's essentially the same money and it's fine. And right. it's just a little bit better for my career right. and it has some career ramification kind of thing. Right. And so he starts to freak out at me. Right. And, and at goes, which point you should have just put the phone down. Totally. Totally. I thought I was being, you know, let's do this like people where I'm saying, I'm sorry. And I was going to offer him other comics. I was like, you know, I got, I got friends that are amazing comics that could just slide right into this slot. Same pay rate that, you know, are not more expensive. It's not Maria, you know. I could get you so I get you Aaron Foley right. for the same price right. as Jackie Cation. Right. And people will love Aaron Foley. Right. And so um Aparna Nancherla could have gotten her in. She's right. amazing. And so, it does colleges and uh, so super, you know, perfectly clean and lovely. And um 
But it never even got to that because he was like, I'm about to throw up, he said. Oh, call your mother. <laughs> Tell her to burp you. Oh, my God, with these guys. And it's so funny because I literally emailed you and said that this is what I kind of wanted to talk about with right. this whole sexist thing that goes on in the stand-up world that I don't think that a lot of people understand the level of what happens, the level Which of... Which is weird that they wouldn't understand it because absolutely every time you're interviewed for something, what is the first question they say? What is it like to be a female comedian? Or who's your favorite female <laughs> comedian? What is it like being a woman? But I think people are industry. afraid to actually say it. Like I, they're no, no, afraid. we can't actually talk about it. There's no, I mean, it's you just you're then you're a bitch. Well, it, it, unless you can like objectively start looking at it, which is what I'm starting to do. I'm like finally at the point that I can objectively because what happens is the powerlessness that I feel when I see it going on is so right. tra- like almost like unbearable that I'm like, how would I, how am I ever going to make it if this is what really goes on? Right. And the only way to make it is to not, like I said, not feed into the action, which is when yeah. somebody's disgusting to you. But I had the guy interview me. I was headlining up in Boston last uh, Friday night at okay. Showcase Live. I was supposed to go on the radio. The, they called me. They pre-interviewed me. Okay. Told me specifically that there's no riffing, that I had to do my bits. That's it. Okay. Which already I was like, all right, but what whatever, do I'll care? do it. Right. Yeah. I mean, we get told to be to do every weird thing in the world. You're like, <laughs> oh, okay, whatever, I guess. So I, so we already, pre-empt- we already pre-interviewed me. And right. then he calls me, whoever the host was. I forget the guy's name. He's on some radio station. And um, he's, as soon as he starts, he starts with, I'm looking at pictures of you. And I could feel the lust through the phone. And then he's like, um, uh, well. And had you discussed that you were going to discuss your looks? No, we were going to do my bits. And right? so I was totally thrown off balance because we had already set it up the other way. I would have been thrown off balance in anyways, but I was really thrown off balance. So anybody who doesn't understand, awkward. being a woman set up this way on the phone, on the radio, it's an attack. A lot of times women will will attack because they don't even know what to do. They're so horrified. Oh, they'll feed into it and make almost sexually make fun of themselves because it's. Oh, to, to diffuse the, you to don't, diffuse yes, the like situation. Maybe if I just keep saying it, it'll stop. And, so, <laughs> and it doesn't stop and talking encourages about me. them. Yeah, yeah. I know you want to put your wiener in oh me. It gosh. doesn't matter, man. And he said to me, now I was in the movie The Fighter. It's okay. like an Oscar-nominated Boxing huge movie. Boxing yes, movie, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. I played mm-hmm. a crack addict. It's a huge honor. I'm yeah. really like proud of it. And he's like, did you sleep with Mark Wahlberg to get the part? And so I wow. hung up. It was, he, this was a pre-taped thing too, which I didn't know. Yeah. I thought I was going live. Oh, and you just called it? You just like, all right. Click. No, so I, call, I hung up and then I called the guy at the club and I said, listen. And it was so amazing to even, sometimes it takes so much energy to even get through the person at the club for them to understand. Right. Like nobody gets it because. Because so, they think they're being hilarious. And, so, and they don't want to deal with it and right. they're nervous and they don't want to. And so how much energy it takes for us to deal with the business before we get on stage is insane. Right. The terror the the danger sometimes that I feel like I one night I was in the Laugh Factory and um in Hollywood it was like Saturday night ten o'clock show and right. Tosh came in okay and it was like packed 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 and they went mental right they go mental I mean mental right they were all up in the rafters because there were nineteen year old young yes. men who loved yes. to see somebody get hit in the balls and just went crazy and right so then Jamie Masada comes over and he there was supposed to be a guy and then me <gasps> and Jamie comes over and he goes Sue you go next. And I was like, all right. Right after Tosh? Yes. Okay. And I was like, Sue, just hold on to yourself. You just can do, do your it. set. You can do it. Yeah. You can do it. So he he closes with, all you women that uh, all you <laughs> women that didn't have babies in your 30s, <laughs> the reason why you didn't have babies and that you're trying to have fertility now in your 40s or whatever, mm-hmm. stop mm-hmm. it. Because God is not going to let you have babies because you were all cunts in your 30s. Good night, everybody. And my whole stomach dropped. And now the audience doesn't see any of this going on. Right. And what I was the, like, oh my where, gosh, how do I handle oh, this? Oh, the hilarious... Daniel, where's the punchline? That's I'm what gonna he need said one before more I went on stage. I'm going to need one more line. Because you were all it's going to be the twist. 30. Yeah, I'm going to need a twist where there's a punchline. I was like, oh, and the terror inside of me. And then they got all unruly because, you know, when somebody famous gets off stage and I was like, yeah, yeah, how am done. I going to do this? And I was like, Sue, and what I always want to do is be true to myself yeah. and not... Because I used to get on stage all aggressive and people were like, what the hell's wrong with this girl? Because mm-hmm. they didn't see the undertone of it all. Right. And uh, I walked on stage and I just, I said, hi, everybody, I'm Sue and I'm a cunt. <laughs> and they all laughed and I oh, just good. Lo- yeah, yeah. It and I did my act. But that's taken me 20 years. To figure out to, how to do that? To not get so scared and get on stage and just do the same, like, wah, 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 just to- Well, there you go. So that's kind of neat, though. I mean, that's that's sort of beautiful. Just because the longer you do this, the better you get at those situations, you know, where you're just like... We, we've we all had so many things happen where you're just like, well, there's that guy. 
or, oh, there's that lady. And you're like, well, I, I actually don't have time to talk yes. to you right now. I'm trying to do some. Okay. No, no. Feel free to have rage. I'm going to be over here trying it's to do really, tell some jokes. I don't think I ever admitted to how scared I get and how like, I mean. Yeah. I mean, you have to sort of rise above that stuff uh, is what they, that's the only thing they ever tell you when you start doing stand up comedy. And this is for men and women. I mm-hmm. mean, because. You know, we can talk about because we're women and that's the experience we have doing Mm -hmm. stand up comedy. You know, I talk to guys and they're like, you know, it's no cakewalk being a guy comic. Mm -hmm. And I was like, nobody is saying. Right. But that's what I find that we're not, we're almost not allowed to have our opinion because we get that crazy like rah 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 it's not easy to be a guy we're like we're not saying i'm not saying it's not easy that anyone's handing you 20s under the table i'm just trying to voice what it's like to be a woman (laughs) right and i like Like, being a woman right right i i enjoy being a a lady comic i don't enjoy the word comedian at any time uh i feel like you've just slapped me (laughs) so if you could not call me a comedian that would be ideal i know phyllis diller or some fuck uh somebody liked it that doesn't mean i have to so uh, well and also if you you look at phyllis diller like she had to be a little kooky to be able to be accepted and the whole idea of i've decided that um if you're going to call me a comedian please call me a comedian let's just com- completely diminutize it <laughs> let's just this but this guy that i just talked to in the midwest uh this one nighter guy he has made me so aggro today mm-hmm. that i'm just like fucking bring it people but right see now what i mean but look at what I, that's exactly what i'm saying like yeah. the powerlessness that you feel after hanging up the phone with that guy who's like I don't know if he talks to the guys like that or if it affects the guys as much. We're different than men. Right. Well, and, well, the thing is, 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 yeah, I was talking to Andy about it, who's my husband, uh, and he was like, Oh, I know that guy. That's the guy that's trying to intimidate you. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm, he's, and, and that's, that's what he's doing is he's just trying to, inti- and I was like, Yeah, I got that. And he said, Yeah, but he, but he has a, he has a checklist of things that, cause it can't be good for, it's, it's, it's no longer business. As soon as anybody starts trying to intimidate you, Mm -hmm. they're no longer in any sort of business relationship with you Mm -hmm. because there is no, what benefit is it to either of your businesses if he is about to burst into tears or throw up or say, well, you know, I printed up 5,000 flyers with your name on it. And, uh, did he say that? Yeah. The the gig is six months away. See now he's yeah. trying to get into your female guilt. Oh oh, you plinted up for anybody's guilt, right? Yeah, right, because it's just like, and you're like, dude. First of all, five thousand flyers. You got them for two hundred dollars. <laughs> uh, second of all, but who cares? It's part of doing business. I don't care. It's like save it for your mother, save it for whoever, <laughs> for your wife. I don't care. Right, right. Write a blog. But, but that's it what I did. Me forever to stop like taking it on. I can't I'm taking it personal. But because we to... get so like crazy. Like I was worked in Jersey one time, and the guy was like, "Take your shirt off." And the other thing you get a lot of times is from the guy. The guy on told stage, you to take your shirt off, and then he would give me my check. Nice. Yeah. I mean, nice. who wants to deal? That's so hard. I've had club owners say, hey, we're going to go out to breakfast. You can sit on my face. And uh, you're just like, what's happening? I do, I, and it's funny do I have to be any part of this conversation? I'm right. Do I have hilarious. to even be in this conversation? Like, do I want to leave my body? It's like, I don't even want to have, I don't want this to be part of my life. Right. It's just guys who aren't funny at all and have no sense of the idea of what, because they, you know that they're, and granted, this is me. Not justifying it at all, but just trying to find a place where I'm not filled with hate That's toward these I'm people, right? About. Yeah, you can. So what you have to do is sort of go, oh, that guy's trying to be funny. Yeah, and they don't and, know. A lot of them don't know. That's why I say if you take the emotion out of it and you actually explain it. And sometimes it takes you like 17 times. Like I had a guy come see me at the <laughs> Laugh Factory and I was telling him what it was like to be a woman. Like how they'll either like knock you down sexually or whatever. And I forget who was hosting, but I did. the. It was a clean show. And I talked about all this like like you know uh, emotional stuff i didn't swear right. i didn't say anything dirty and he's like a music producer and i had explained to him what it was like to be a woman before that because he kept and a lot of people say to me like sue what is it what is it what's what how come you're not bigger stand-up wise how come you're not bigger and sometimes i'll say because i'm a woman that's the fact uh-huh. and uh so he watched me do the set and then i got off and he's like sue i saw it he's like i didn't know that i couldn't laugh he, I thought I only laughed at like dick jokes and everything. He's like, you just did total like 20 minutes clean. And I was laughing hysterically. He goes, and the host got on and he said something disgustingly about fucking you. And I said, yeah, when I left, right? Mm-hmm. And he goes, yeah, because you were that funny and it made him mad. And I said, see? Mm-hmm. And so he never even, how would, I, for me to expect them to know what it's like to be an experienced right. world as a woman is, is a, is a, 
Not right, right. And you can't bookend every guy's experience that way. Hopefully they have mothers and sisters and, uh, and they're perfect. Who knows I mean, if the mothers and sisters even know how to communicate it. Well, no, no, but I mean, like, I know a lot of guys. Here's what, here's what I do. <laughs> Cause now we're, now we're just, you're, it's feminism essentially, right? And it's, it's, it's the human experience from, that's what we're talking about, right? From a woman's point of view. Well, and also we're human. Mm hmm. Yeah, that we're not, yeah. Like I watched Bill Maher last night and he's like, so, so, saying to Salman Rushdie, like, me and Moe's Duff were trying to figure out how you get so much pussy. And I was like, there is a person wrapped around all those pussies. <laughs> I'm like, what? And it's just become oh, were so you expecting something? Acceptable. Bill Maher, Howard oh Stern, gosh. I'm and like, any what? Number- well, Bill Maher and Bill Howard Stern, I like to hear their comedy secondhand. I can't hear it coming out of their own joke holes. I'm like, what? Their joke holes are attached to some pussy joke almost immediately. Oh and you're just like, the one, I have told this story before. And Bill Maher, fine. I understand you're very nice to some friends of mine, people I know and love. But uh, to me, it's because he's stoned all the time, Is right? Is it all because he's does the way he and looks? And he doesn't care. Oh, the way he looks. What's what's wrong with the way he looks? He's normal looking. Mm-hmm. No? <laughs> Well, I I don't find him to be the most handsome person in the world. No, no. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but I find it ironic that it's that's you, the way oh, he talks about women. Like he even said to the ah. Salman Rushdie about, and it was just so easily like, and he's like, oh, and if the guy, they were talking about some guy getting a line in a movie. He's like, and if he got that line, he would have fucked that extra. And I'm like, oh God, this is all that. You, right, right. He, he he's a terrible person. He's oh. gross. I don't uh, think he, I've ever even watched it before. And I was watching it and I was like, ooh. Yeah, ow. He, he's ow, <laughs> ow! Stop hitting me! What are you doing? <laughs> but well, my God, is there anything in there that you can say that's nice? Well, he he has his writers come up with some very funny. Like he always has a woman comic open for him. Oh, he does. Yeah, yeah, because it softens his his crazy. It softens his lady crazy. But he shows up with an entourage of. From what I was told, uh, this was the time when he was very much into very, very tiny black women. Tiny. Tiny. <laughs> like your size, but with giant fake boobs. Yeah. Black, I assume. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, cause you know, if you're gonna get fake boobs and you're a white lady, don't get black boobs. Uh, it'll really <laughs> break up some symmetry. I almost went and did it today. Thank and God you told me. Got that. some black boobs. <laughs> and then, and a giant butt. So, um, there are tiny women with giant boobs and giant butt, but, uh, and he had those women with him. And supposedly, they, uh, ostensibly, they are paid companions, these people. Mm-hmm. And he had about 16 people with him. <laughs> and there was a cheese plate, which there hadn't been for the rest of the week. Uh, they, they, they went out on a limb at this gig and, uh, they had a cheese plate for, I was doing the whole week, but for Sunday night, there was a cheese you plate. You opened for him? I opened for him. Okay. And so, uh, I'm up in the green room, hanging out wowing myself with the cheese plate <laughs> and uh bill mar i go up to bill mar and i said hey i'm jackie cation um i'm opening for you and he shakes my hand uh tentatively and then he says are you gonna need this room what yeah are because i kind of need this room i was like the green room uh no no I can go wait in the uh, the coat rack before I go up on stage that's fine he didn't even hear me <laughs> can I pay ninety dollars for it too <laughs> he didn't even hear me he goes thank you thank you oh see that and so I come downstairs just... and the woman who was the PR lady the owner of the club knew what Bill Maher was and everybody else knew what Bill Maher was but the PR lady had no idea and so she comes up to me furious at one point after my set um. But bef- wait, I don't know when it was, but it was dur- it was before he went up, and she was like, "They're smoking pot up there. Mm. They're smoking pot up there." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, that's it's Bill Maher. What 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 happened?" And she was like, "If if the cops came in here right now, we would be shut down. This would this would they would they would take the building." And I was like. I'm going to go get a soda. Because I don't want to be part of this conversation. Wait, I, I don't know how to fix this conversation. You booked Bill Maher. What are you thinking? It's something funny. I see like a cartoon of you like always being like, I don't want to be part of this conversation. I am constant. I'm a big fan of, I'm going to go get a soda. And uh, I also enjoy the words, I'll be right back and then not coming back. Or we're planning on ever. Because it's true. Because people just dump everything all over you all the time. And you're like, ah. Meryl, you know Meryl Marco, right? Have you ever met no. Meryl Marco? No, head writer for Letterman back in the 90s. Oh, no, uh, no, no. Yeah, she went cool. out with Letterman. She invent, she created like, uh, the top 10 list and oh, the wow, stupid Patrick's cool. and all of his, all the extraneous stuff. She came up with that and she was a head writer. Mm-hmm. And, um, 
but she has a, a book called Cool, Calm, and Contentious. And it's a very funny book. Uh, the hell was the point of this story? Well, let's go. Oh, because we were talking about you saying I don't want to be part of this conversation. Oh, right, right. She has a great chapter in Cool, Calm, and Contentious, which is uh, how to recognize an asshole. Mm-hmm. And one of the things is, is she met this woman at a party who was like, "You seem so great. Can I get your phone number? I love to talk on the phone, and I've worn out a couple of my friends. Oh, what's your phone?" And Meryl's like. Oh, no, no, I have to go get a soda or whatever. But here's the thing. I don't like to say, this is my thing. I don't like to say that people are assholes. I feel like it's, I've come to, because I'm like, how can I live in this world where that kind of stuff goes on, where I watch a TV show where people talk about women like that for no reason. Right. I'm like, how can I live in this world like that? And how can I justify my hope when it seems really heavy and bad? Okay. And I realize that what I, I feel like we're all born good. Right. And we develop these coping mechanisms or these coping attitudes to survive definitely, in the world. Definitely. So a lot of times it's the, what people have, it's their crazy that they've adapted to survive. That's all twisted up inside of them. Yeah. And that's who you have to stand up to. It's not even actually the person underneath all of it. It's the crazy. And that's why it's so hard to stand. Like that guy acted yeah. insane today for whatever reason. For, yeah. For whatever, for, for whatever personal reasons of his own, he could not just say, Oh, I should have sent you back that contract. Right. Instead of, <laughs> And a lot of it sometimes and, does have to do with being a woman. I don't care what anybody says. They never want to be wrong with their mom. It's hard. It's hard they to never be wrong. want their mom. They never want to feel that powerless with their mom. I don't care what anybody says. You can all have your own opinions. You can say pussy. You right. Can say you you fucked say, extra. This you're whining. You're whining. I don't care. You don't care. You get to. I'm not yeah. whining. You know why? I'm Celebrate your dorkdom. And your dorkdom is that, uh, is that sometimes. And being a small woman. Right. They pick me up all the time. I know. And they pick me up and I hate it. Yes. If I, uh, they physically lift you all the time, (sighs) all the time. So I'm trying to have like a conversation or I'm trying to like, and they're just like, but you're so adorable. I want to stick (laughs) in my pocket. If anyone did that to Jimmy Pardo, (laughs) he would rip off their head and pee down their neck. Well, and guys are also allowed to be more aggressive. If a girl acts aggressive, then they get like really nervous about it. People don't like it. Like even when they get all mad about it, that they're like, what do you, I'm just kidding. I got it. Why are you a bitch? Right. Why are you? And, and I don't want to be called a bitch, you know, and, but I also don't want to live my life in fear of being called a bitch. Well, here, and because I, I have to stand up for myself. And if you think I'm a bitch, I guess I'm a, you know, whatever. I met my friend who used to run this big, huge company, and she gave me the best advice I've ever had because I was terrified. Mm-hmm. I was terrified if they called me a bitch. Right. Which usually the people that call me a bitch, I don't even care. Right. What are you going to do? Invite them over for a barbecue? I'm no. Like, whatever. <laughs> who cares? Go. You'll be like, talking about somebody else in five seconds, anyways. Like, I'm not that important either. Right. How but can it? <laughs> she told me, she said, Sue, I said, I'm afraid they're going to say that I'm this and that and whatever. And she's like, Sue, good. Let them and let them get the word out. And I had this guy come up to me, my one woman show. He's, let them get the yeah, word out. Them. And I, when she said that to me, I was like, oh, that's right. You should get out that you can't mess with me. And then uh, this guy came up to me. Uh, He said two things to me. The first thing he said to me is, Sue Costello, he goes, your street smarts mixed with your sophistication makes you a very dangerous woman. I said, yeah. I looked him right in the eyes. I go, go tell your friends. (laughs) And then he goes, I got some guys from Dubai. They want, they'll want to invest some money in your show. I want you to meet them. And I go, all right, I'll meet them. And he goes, you know, they're all going to want to fuck you. I go, yeah, tell them to get in line. I, and he laughed and it was like, I took it off the, yeah, just off, took it off the table. I took it off the table. I was like, you want to go? I mean, that is the weirdest thing is the amount of random sexual comments that happened to us <laughs> for no reason. And, and it's out of nowhere like, too. you. Like I'm talking to you about this one thing and they're like, <laughs> weren't we discussing autumn? Why all of a sudden the leaves changing make you want to put your wiener in somebody? <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> but I mean, it's just a fact of what happens and we're not being bitter about it. We're, we're kind of it's laughing. Funny. It's funny. It's funny because crazy. it doesn't make any sense. And it doesn't genuinely doesn't matter what you look like. Cause I have, I talk no. about how this look, the Jackie Cation look mm-hmm. is not a MILF. This is not, this is, I am not a cougar. <laughs> this is lady who makes a hell of a pot roast, you know? Like if you miss your mom, I'll hug you. And, but still banana heads with the, oh, yeah. with the cracks and the grabbing. Mm-hmm. And they're like, well, I'm gay. And you're like, uh, still, that's where I keep my private parts. Right, right, right. <laughs> I don't care if you're the gayest human being right. on the planet. Uh, you're gross. And yes. I don't grab you. So, so there's something I find that be interesting about just saying it. 
And just saying it and just being like, yeah. And then showing up because it gives me the ability to keep like now I'm, I'm, I've been able to handle the powerlessness, accept it and now show up and be like, well, I'm going to do, I'm not going to do, some people choose to do the whole like get rough and be crazy. I'd never wanted to. I wanted to maintain my femininity and be su- successful. And I think I'm managing it right now. Like I can still go on stage and kill consistently in a way that without being so terrified. I used to be so terrified. Right. I don't think, I mean, for me, when I go on stage, I don't ever think of it like people. That's why I'm always confused when people are like, what's it like to be a woman comic? And I'm like, well, I don't know what it's like to be anything else. I've been, I know it's hard to believe, but I was born a woman. (laughs) Like in society, uh, we have our own like hatred of ourselves as being a woman. Like I... I bet you if a lot of women just sat down. Oh, it's carefully like, taught. Right? It's carefully cult- I mean. cultivated. And that's it why is, I defend the guys a little bit too, because they've been cultivated in the way that they've been. Well, cultivated. ever since, I mean, and the thing, the, the, the new thing with guys now is they, they've run out of things to nitpick women with, like right. fashion and, right. and marketing, and they've got to sell shit to guys now. So right. now it's like, Oh, dude, you're too hairy. Right. Now the guys are getting it. Now the guys are getting it. I'm like, I'm sorry, your calves. Do guys have cankles? Does that guy have cankles? And you're like, okay, you're getting some sense of what it is like constantly for somebody to give me, give a damn about the back of my arms. But the funny part about it is no, but there is nobody who has the perfect back of the arms. Because even if you saw the person that you thought had the best pa- right. back of the arms, TMZ or Perez would say something like, They'd close up in on him on a pimple or something. There is no Oz. Nobody is the hottest, sexy. There is none. No. So as soon as I started to realize all that, I'm like, oh, well, I'm just going to be me. Like, why don't I just, it's almost like I pretended but like it, I wasn't But it me. does take, it takes so long to come to yourself, to actually find yourself mm-hmm. to the point where you find sort of a quiet place inside of you that can just go, okay, I guess I'm just going to be this person and everyone. I mean, it's like you take care of you worry about your honor to something. I mean, mm-hmm. to, to make it sound kind of queer, uh, you worry about your honor and then your reputation. There's nothing you can do about it. You know, like if well, people your reputation, are going to get, if you act in a way that's it, if consistent you to, to your honor. But yes. the thing is, is, is if somebody's bad mouthing you, but very, very rarely do they bad mouth you unless you give them an opening to do that. Unless right. you sink to the level. If you don't sink to the level, there's usually nothing that they can say. But that's the that's the key. That's like but, the martial arts but, of. Well, that, that's the martial arts of it. But I'm I'm talking about a rare occasion when mm-hmm. you haven't done anything. Oh yeah. And people um, can make things up about you because you've rejected them or you've done something. They're like, well, he's a dick uh, because he said no to this thing. So he's actually, in addition to being a dick, because he wouldn't do this thing, he's actually rude. I don't know if you know this about him. Right. But he's also rude, and he doesn't wash his hands after he goes to the bathroom, and like. <laughs> But the consistency, so. here's what I'm... So but the, I say don't worry about that. Don't because, worry about what's being said about you because yeah. you can't stop it. But you can handle but, the consistency of your own behavior that will yes. knock that out of the park every way, which is, brings me back to the whole woman and it being can't afraid. Knock, but it can't knock it out of the park if you... Hide. Right. And you, But you can't hide, but you... Uh, what I, I don't think you're, I don't think, I think you get what I'm saying. So I, it doesn't matter. But well, my point is that you have to, like you were saying, you have to stick up for yourself. You have to, have to stick up to yourself. Sounds like you have to fight. You have to take care of yourself. You have to show up for yourself. Like even that whole thing with Showcase Live, like handling that whole situation with the guy on the radio and how devastating it was. Cause I knew it was just extra stuff that I, but part of me is like, oh, this is extra stuff I shouldn't have to deal with. And then I'm like, no, Sue, how can you own your part, part of this? And I'm like, no, Sue, you're a woman. This is part of it. Instead of still feeling like I was like victimized, like, like, oh, no, they wouldn't talk to a guy like that. I'm like, Sue, it is what it is. Yeah, who, but what who, I do is because I take care of myself business-wise all the way up to walking on the stage, yeah. I'm not as terrified as I used to be. So my stand-up showcases itself in the way that is right. true to me. So so what you've really gained out of it is not being afraid. Not being afraid at all. And I, they can yell at me. They can say yeah, whatever yeah. they want. And the thing that I've learned how to do is not let them provoke me. Yeah. Because then they can provoke me and then they can go see. Because that's what they like to do and they'll well, do that, it a lot. Well, that's what it all it is. They're just trying to get an emotion out of you. Then they can say it's not them, it's you. Right. Like that guy today could have, if you got well, that's what far with him. Well, yeah, what he wanted was he wanted some sort of emotional response from me. And I was mm-hmm. like, and we're done now. Mm-hmm. And then he called me honey and I was like, and we're done. And, <laughs> and he, he goes, no, no, anything. I just call, I just call people. And I said, have a good, good luck click but and see that was what i was talking about those are the defense mechanisms that he uses to handle himself when he's when he's desperate right henny henny, henny. and it's like right, if right. we don't go because because we i'm do- well i'm yeah i mean i yeah i spend a, a i don't have a 
I, you know, obviously those are not situations that I ever look for. Mm-hmm. You know, I think I'm being very, very clear mm-hmm. when, cause I do my own booking, right? I don't mm-hmm. have a booking agent. Mm-hmm. Me too. And I, so I have to work with people. Mm-hmm. And so when you work with people, you try to be super clear. And if it's a private event, like this was a, a private event, a private corporate event. And if it's a club, I usually don't get a contract. But on this thing, there's a contract. And the contract is so very straightforward. Mm-hmm. Venue times. Hey, people, I'm going to need a microphone. I'm going right. to need someone to introduce me. Right. I'm going to need travel and lodging. And then I'm going to need a check before I go on stage. Right. And then... um a place to do merch if you think I could sell merch. And if, and if you don't. Which sounds my, completely and totally, absolutely reasonable to me. Yeah, there was, a, and, and then, and then there's a paragraph in it that says, but always remember, stand up comedy and adult sport. I cannot swear if you don't want me to swear. Right. I can, uh, if there are topics you do not enjoy, uh, pipe up. Right. I got a lot of material. Right. I can, uh, if it's an NRA meeting, right. uh, I, <laughs> first of all, why have you chosen me? And <laughs> I do nothing about guns, but, uh, I, you know, I won't do my, you know, I'm against war bit. Right. Or maybe, cause I, I, I also am not a giant button pusher. Right. I don't. Right. No. Yeah. Right. I, I got, I got nothing to prove. Right. So if you, if you have something to prove, I don't want to work with you if you have something to prove. Mm-hmm. I have an, I have my art. I have my right. thing that I need to do and I need to do it for somebody. And if I have to go to Northern Minnesota and do it for four old ladies that have never heard of me. But part of letting everybody get a light to shine on that art is not going into the dark with all the other things, which is tremendously, which is brings us back to the sports again, which is what I love about the sports. I remember when I really started watching baseball and they would like the pitcher, they would take care of his arm and they would make sure and they would value him. And I was like, oh, that was not my ex- first experience in Hollywood. My first experience oh, right. in Hollywood was chew them up and spit them out. Oh, right. Well, wasn't that when everybody was getting sitcoms and you got a sitcom? Well, I had three deals. You had three deals, but did one, did they all go to a Only network? one of them went to network. Okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So you had a, a network sitcom that went to, and what was it called? Costello. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Oddly You're enough, because SueCostello.com. <laughs> and it was set in Boston and you were sassy, if I, I remember correctly. Sassy. Were you sassy. I was the sassy bartender. Right. And uh, <laughs> fantastic. And so, but I think that uh, the, the show is, yeah, I think it was the time when a lot of they they were they were trying to find they were trying to force comics to be Jerry Seinfeld when they didn't realize that Jerry Seinfeld happened by accident. You know, well, most art doesn't happen by it doesn't necessarily happen by accident, but it's a a lot of things that go. Uh, Brandon Tartikoff is the reason why that kept going. That was like they did six episodes and NBC wasn't going to pick it up, or they weren't sure, and Brandon Tartikoff got behind it and really i mean that's the truth everybody out here everywhere they love to be like oh it's luck it's this it's that it's It's not it's not luck it's but it's a it's a maybe luck's the wrong word it's you know when when friends made it huge and then every single sitcom after that had six people two apartments and they're like it's gonna be friends it's gonna be friends you're like you can't you have to get the right people but everything that was respectful i mean everything that was successful had a level of respect and commitment to it. If you really want to break it all down, forget all the baloney, it had a level of respect and commitment to it. Brandon and Tadikoff was one of the most like, in friends? dignified. In Friends, they had all those people were equally talented. Then you start breaking off from that and trying to manufacture it. Then you have one person that's the more talented. You have other people that aren't as talented. In Friends, they were all perfectly talented and they all meshed very well together. And you had a great director. I think it was Jim Burroughs. But it was... It was, it was um... It was a cauldron that was created, but not on purpose, right? Yes, but they probably took the time to create it. They had a vision, like you just said, about your art. It meant something yeah. to you. It like meant a- something to somebody. It wasn't just somebody trying to cookie cut yes. that. But if so, if you look at all success and all like all things that make it, it's usually because there's a level of, com- you, you know, yes, people like some, oh, somebody believes in it. And there's a enough. love, there's a little bit of love to it. You have to have something. I mean, I saw um, Frank and Weenie. I went to the premiere of Frank and Weenie the yes. other night. How was it? Oh my gosh, it's so <laughs> good. And he was talking about, it's about science. And That's they, neat. One of the experiments, he said to him, it worked the first time, it didn't work the second time. And he said, was, did you love it the first time? Did you love your subject? And he said, yes. And he goes, the second time, did you? He said, no, I was just doing it. It's exactly what you just said about those sitcoms. Yeah. And he said, yeah. it's not going to work unless you have love for it. Yeah, you, you got to, yeah, someone has to believe in it enough to love it. But I've been trying to say this since back then when I had this, and they thought I was insane. They'd be like, you want a boat? You're going to want a thing? You're going to want this? And I'm like, no, I would like everybody to like kind of talk and have feel better. 
And they're like, you're insane. You're not. And now all of a sudden the world's falling apart a little bit. People are starting to listen a little bit more. They're like, you know what? Maybe that isn't the answer. Oh, what? People wanted you to buy crap? Is that what I'm hearing? No. Yeah. They just thought the more money I would make. And it oh, wasn't, then, then wasn't you would be happier. Money. Yeah. But it, or that I just would want it. Right. I don't want a boat. Right. I want, I mean, I remember being in therapy and I was like, oh, my therapist was like, Sue, you don't have to have a huge house. Right. And I was like, I don't. No. Because I was so young. I was literally, I was hanging out with this guy, uh, did a private gig to CJ Watson. He plays basketball for uh, the Bulls and he just got uh, transferred to the Nets. All right. And he was just like, Sue, yeah. He was tweeting. Mm -hmm. I'm with the hilarious Sue Costello. And I was talking to him and it was funny because he said to me, um, he grew up same, probably the same as me, I think in Chicago. No, he grew up in Vegas, but same thing. No money. You get, and then all of a sudden you get all this money. You don't know right. what to do. And these people, they were all taking my picture and these people, they had this product, this drink. And they were like, uh, Sue, can we just get a picture? And I, I was standing there taking pictures with everybody and I go, oh no. And I ducked down and I sat down and he looked at me and he said, Sue, he goes, I thought you were joking. He goes, how come you didn't do that? I go, cause they're going to use my image to sell their product and they're not giving me any money for it. And he's like, oh my gosh. Right. Well, you know, Will Smith, um, I was standing in, <laughs> accidentally standing in line that he was signing stuff. Mm -hmm. And as it got closer and closer, <laughs> my friend, Jenny, we had just gone to look at the hands and feet. My friend Jennifer and I, and uh, he was getting his hands and feet done right in front of Grommets, right? And so Will Smith is really, really nice and talking to people and holding babies. And he was incredibly sweet. He took a good 45 minutes to try to meet as many people as he could, right? Mm -hmm. And so when he got to us, as he got closer, Jennifer was just sitting there going, well, well, do you have a pen? I guess I should get his signature. That's what people are doing. And uh, the guy next to us said, I have an extra pen. So all she had to write on was a star map that she had bought, a map of the stars. And um, so when he got to us, she said, hey, will you sign this? And he says, you know, I actually can't sign this because that would be an endorsement. And they would love that. See? Yeah. And but, so but that brings us back to here's a guy being generous and loving but still having – boundaries and protecting yeah. himself and he said it in a very nice way right. that's what i was missing when i first time around i didn't know well yeah because you have to learn how to say no in in a way that isn't you're just like no right. i actually can't do that and then and you can explain why he explained right. why yeah yeah. He, yeah you can explain why but also to some extent no is a complete sentence mm -hmm. you know well, and, that's what i was gonna say you have to feel you have to feel worthy to say to no. protect yourself yeah to have your art be shown the way, like I'm, like when I had those three deals, like everybody's like, oh, you got them. No, I got those three deals. I'm yeah. the one that negotiated them. I showed up. I shot pilots. I showcased my acting. I showed up on one of them where I shot the pilot in like 24 hours. One girl got fired. I, I showed up. Jim Burrows directed me and I shot it like crazy. So my stamina was always there. But what I realized is that I wasn't protecting myself with the decisions I was making. I was just showing up and churning it out and letting everybody make all money and not taking care of myself. Okay. So until I started to realize like, wait a minute. And even when I'm on the phone with somebody like that guy today. Yeah. That you were talking to? Yeah. What goes through me now is like, why is he still talking to me? I actually thought that. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, this conversation ended about six sentences because he ago. he wants you because he thinks you're talented, but the feelings he's giving you are that you're terrible and less than. But yeah, the reality weird, is, yes. Yeah, it was so weird. It was the, it was, and it hasn't happened to me in a while, you know, because I do tend to nip it in the bud now mm -hmm. because whether or not I do, I still don't have patience for it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I don't. I don't, uh, I guess I'm aware of the fact that I don't deserve to be treated like that. And so once it begins, I'm like, no. But no, the craziest no, but thing is great. he wants you. It's almost like a guy who knocks you down so that you'll think you need him. It's like, because otherwise I did that with this guy who was on the phone with him do, trying to do my one woman show. I've been doing my one woman show for 10 years. I've had people come on and want to do it and they weren't the right people and I haven't taken it. And it, he was like, uh, he wanted to say there was a contract and I didn't want them to put it on the internet. And okay. he said on the phone, sure, we won't put it on the internet. And I said, we'll take it out of the contract. Mm -hmm. I'm not signing a contract. And he right, wouldn't. Right. No, no, and you got to take the, it out of the contract. No, he wouldn't. And then he had the business affairs girl call me. And she was like, and I, my attorney was with me. And uh, she <laughs> says, uh, Sue, we just do this to help people. She goes, we're not in this for the money or whatever. I go, really? I go, you're calling me from business affairs. Right. You should be doing this for the no, money. No, she's lying to me. I was well, like, obviously she's up. lying to me. And meanwhile, I'm like, why have you called me 50 times? Like, wh go call the girl down the street. Like, finally, I realized, like, it's not acceptable to treat me that way. And why you bought, why you keep calling me? Because you obviously know that I have right. something. Oh, I must right. have some talent. Because why, why don't you call 
right. Gertrude up the street. <laughs> right, right. What's so, Marianne doing? But that's and, that fascinating thing where they're trying to make you feel really bad, but they actually want you. Because why right. else? And the reason I called him was to offer him options. Right. You know, because I did feel like, well, this guy, because he had, was very excited about having me. And I was like, well, I'm, that's very nice. I'm glad you're excited about having me. Um, uh, well, I have to take this other op- opportunity because it's a, it's a, quite honestly, a better opportunity. Right. And you're responsible for whatever out, uh, whatever back- output is happening. No, from- and whatever happens, whatever results come from that. Like if he never wants to work with you again because of that, then that's your choice. Like you right. have to make our own choices too, but you can't just treat us terribly. You cannot, right. no matter what, you cannot talk to me that way. It's just right. not going to happen. <laughs> right. It d- yes. Yes, so it's the Stand Up For Yourself episode of The Dork Forest. I like it. I like it. Well, dorks need to learn how. Well, and it, cause it's better for everybody. Cause if I take care of myself and yeah. I t- stand up for myself, I'm much more pleasant to come on your podcast. <laughs> right, I'm right. much more pleasant for everybody. Then you don't have to take care of me. Right. I'm not chasing everybody around to take right. care and of me. And there's no weird bottled rage that's going to yes. come out in yes. some weird sideways thing when I'm getting a soda. Yes. Right. Cause, and some, you know, Dude's making seven bucks an hour. He doesn't need to be the result no. of the fact that, because you know, I used to work at Kinko's, oh, and God. all the middle management people who would come in to do the copying that they had been sent from their bosses, mm-hmm. and they didn't have anybody to, <laughs> to anybody to boss right. around, and so they would be super mean to me, mm-hmm. not just me, anybody at Kinko's, and uh, and granted, I have been on both sides of the Kinko's counter, people. <laughs> there is some serious apathy going right. on. That's because those people are making six fifty mm-hmm. an hour. It's really hard to give a shit mm-hmm. uh but yeah but um yeah but it, but if you bleed off all of that rage by by acting by acting appropriately mm-hmm. when when you are being challenged when you are being mistreated and they but people see you as a person because once again their crazy is coming out of their head right so you have to have enough strength inside of you and i do it a lot with my humor a lot of times i'm lucky because to be funny you can do it right you can diffuse any number of things but but still maintain, like, see me as a person. And sometimes it takes them, like, three or four times. And most people are like, I can't even do it once. How am I going to do it three and four times? But if you do it three and four times, it starts to work. Like, I went on the Laugh Factor with Kevin Neal last night. Mm-hmm. We had just pure, unadulterated, hilarious fun. And he I love Kevin Nealon. Oh, my God. And he was literally like, Sue, I think you're having more fun than everybody here tonight. And I'm like, <laughs> and everybody, like, they, it was contagious in the whole room. And then they were, like, fist pumping me afterwards. And I was like, yeah. nobody's going to tell me ever again that joy and hope and freedom and silliness is not right. In any there's way. not a place for it. There's a place for all the other things. All those other people can do whatever they want to do too. But I think that there's a place for me too. And that's right. the only difference. And I used right. to think, oh, I can't do it. Everybody else, you have to be mean. You have to be this. You have to be that. And I'm like, well. Yeah, whenever I, whenever I talk to somebody who's like, well, if you really want to make it, you got to be a bitch. And I'm like, I don't think you do. Mm-mm. You just have to stand up for yourself and then they'll call you a bitch. But whatever. But they don't even necessarily. It's funny. They, if, if you don't act like it, like if you just... I've I, stood I had a friend who used to tell a joke. Uh, she was like, all women have been called a cunt, even if they don't know it. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. Right. So, I mean, you can... That's just like a horrible word that like, really? I wouldn't even like... If somebody says that to me, I'm like, Ugh, I don't even... God bless you. You really need a lot of help <laughs> because why would you... That's I, I have no idea what it means, quite honestly. It's just I know word... exactly what they, what, they, what they mean when they're calling me a bitch. They're calling me a mean-spirited person. And quite honestly, I'm not or that. They, I think they... No, I think they see bitch as like... Ruthless. Oh, she doesn't care. Oh, oh, and oh, and 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 self, self involved or something. Self seeking and, and self seeking. Yeah, she would do anything. That kind of like. Yeah, I don't have just, enough definitions for for the words that might be happening. And granted, I have a very, I have a lovely career. I have a lovely career. Everyone is very supportive. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't think anybody, I never think anyone's calling me anything, but hey, remember Jackie Cation? She was really nice. Uh, that's what I always think people are saying about me. That's what you should think. I always say that. I'm like, if you can think one thing or the other, why don't you think that? <laughs> right. That's what I do. <laughs> we have free will. Like I say that on stage sometimes. I'm like, even if you guys don't laugh, I'm going to pretend like you're laughing because I can do whatever I want to do. <laughs> right, right. As far as I'm concerned, everybody is uh, moving in a Jackie Cation direction. And uh, why wouldn't they? And <laughs> and that's, yeah, and as long as you keep showing up, because, and then once again, even the people that might say cunt, they don't even mean it all the time. They might have meant it in the moment. They, like, if you reveal yourself, and what I was going to say is like, okay, say I have a thing with a guy, a booker or whatever, and I have to stick up for myself with somebody. I had a thing with a booker recently where he was like, d- didn't want to pay me or something, and I was like, yeah, and he's like, I have a good rep. I said, I'll tell every single person I know that you 
Uh, that you stiffed him? That but you weren't going to pay me. Yeah. And he said, oh, I don't care. I have a great reputation. This is some guy out in uh, Long Island or something. He's like, I don't care. He's like, I have a great reputation. And I said, yes, so do I. Yeah. And you know what happened? Yeah. He paused. He thought about it. Mm-hmm. And then he paid me. Why wouldn't he pay you? It's always a weird thing when people are like... They can do it in the dark. They can try to scam me in the dark. They can try to just say, Sue, I'm going to... I had a guy, one time I went to the show, and he's like, all right, you're going to get the door, split the door on the late show, and you're going to go, you get certain pay on the first show, and you get split the door on the late show. And the girl who booked me was like, Sue, the late show's always packed. You'll make good money. I get there, and the, and the early show's packed, and there's nobody on the late show, and I see what he's doing. He made everybody go to the early show so he doesn't have to give me by the door. And he was like all coked up, and I was like, oh, I have to get... I have to get my money from this guy before I leave. I have to get my money. Yeah. And so I, my, I knew my only um, leverage was to get it before the second show. Right. Because I'm not going up. Right. And I said to him, I need my money. And I was like, I need my money before I go. And he screamed in my face, you're a fucking cunt. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. You're a fucking Jeez. cunt. And then he finally gave uh, me the money. Yeah. And I went on stage and he sat in the front table, leaning on the table, intimidating me. Nice. And I was like, is, is this is the most, Really? This is what's... Did you want me... What do you care? He's going to intimidate the person who came to work at his club. Like And was, never will work for him again, oh obviously, God. right? But that's what I had to deal with him screaming at me, fuck yeah. me, fuck me, gunk, just to get my money. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure people deal with this, and I'm sure guys deal with situations. No, no, guys, like too. totally. To, I mean, the weird thing about stand-up comedy is that we we all deal with this nonsense. The weird thing about stand-up comedy, let me say this right now. Say it. It kills me. Because I'm so like not into Go all the baloney now. I'm seeing the truth now. We have the ability to make <laughs> the most money out of any other actor or anything because we can be in movies. We can do stand up. We can do we can do sitcoms. We can do tons and it's tons. It's like you of found stuff. religion. What? what because what, what's I'm like, happening? how have they treat us the worst? How have they figured? How have they done this? How have they made us feel so bad? And we are like we can make the most money out of everybody. Well, you got to dork them. Do it. How did this happen? We our earning potential is greater than most people's, but they somehow trick you into thinking like that guy today. Like I make good money; it's all good. Go. My life is good. My life is perfect, quite honestly. Oh, all is whole now. and per- complete. How can it be perfect? Uh, look around you. What I is live that in cat with the Halloween hat on it. That is really that's going to be an animatronic <laughs> cat in our front yard for Halloween. How can my life not be complete when I own a six foot animatronic cat that's going to be in front of my goddamn house? Pardon me, my life is complete, whole, and complete. No, that's going to be is well in my world. <laughs> oh yeah, where did you get that animatronic cat? I have no idea where Andy Ashcraft purchased that item, uh, but uh, he came home. He said, "Got this for you." And I said, for me? Did you get it for me? <laughs> and he's, because there, there is a house in this neighborhood that is, has a tiny front yard and for Christmas jammed every kind of blow up animatronic Santa, reindeer, Elvis, Grinch. And it was hilarious. It was the packed yard. There was not a square inch that wasn't Santa coming out of a chimney, Santa with a sleigh, and they're all animatronic. And they were just stacked on top so of each other. So you guys, this is the start of it. This and next time I come it. back, I'm oh, going to yeah. see like 17 of them. You know it. Yeah, but that's nice that you say that you're happy with your life. People should be happy with their lives. Like, Yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean. I feel like you should strive for more while still being happy with what you, what I do. you have. I do. Of course you do. You just took the better gig. Right, right. <laughs> I always, yeah, yeah, I always... I mean, my thing is, is I work a great deal on being grateful and mm-hmm. then I work on, um, what I'm, you know, there, there's always a part of me that is like, what are you supposed to be doing? Mm-hmm. You know, but what my answer to, doing, to that would be, yes. you're supposed to put the phone down on that guy today and have the courage and the trust that something different will come along. Yeah. I want to have a, um, yeah. What I'm supposed to do is I'm supposed to have fun and I'm fun. supposed to not be treated poorly. Treated poorly, and uh, and I'm not for the most part. You know, it's so rare that anyone is like that to me. Just yeah, you because don't give off that kind of you don't. That's what I mean. If you, unless you leave it, unless you have a vulnerability or weakness that you're adding into the darkness, it can't survive. So if you're not doing it, yeah, everyone's been pretty supportive, and 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 you know, it's not that people don't say weird things to me because comics say weird things to. People comics weird, are funny. Weird, They're kooky. Co- comics are hilarious, but people say weird things to. I mean, when you meet. Like the, the, the guy who used to own the club in Milwaukee mm-hmm. would pay at the end of the week, he would, uh, you'd come into his office and you'd sit down and there'd be a, uh, a pistol 
a loaded <laughs> pistol sitting on the on, on the thing because he wanted to pretend that he was a made guy. Right. Like he wanted he was a tough guy, tough guy named J.D. J.D. drove a uh, Harley Davidson because it's Milwaukee. Right. Right. And um, he was the tiniest man in the world mm-hmm. inside. You know, he was a giant. I mean, he's probably six, five, six, six. Mm-hmm. He was just a he was just. He's a mess. <laughs> he was a mess of a guy. And I know that one of the guys, like when he paid me, luckily I had been warned about this gun business. <laughs> so the gun, it's pointing at you. It's like it's sitting there like this. And then you're like, and then here's your W9. And here's your thing. And you're just like, why? And every time he hands you a piece of paper, he, he puts his hand over the pistol. And right. so it's super intimidating and completely and entirely absurd. Right. And if that's how I'm killed... Well, that's absurd. Anyway, but well, I'm um, thinking that regular people who are listening to this, like, that's kind of cool. Like people who just get their, their not direct rangers, deposit. Not rangers of the dork forest. No. <laughs> no. Rangers of the dork forest are like, what's happening? That's inappropriate. In my <laughs> I don't approve of that. And, uh, and they're like, or it, a lot of my listeners are like, oh, yeah, yeah, weird guy. <laughs> weird guy did that to right. me. And so because people have fascinating because people are, are weird. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But it's a fine line job. between like figuring out how to move forward and what things you're not supposed to be involved in. Yes. There, it's a very fine line because you're like, well, am I not supposed to work for that guy with the gun? Is it is that the deal or am I supposed to not worry about it? Like to find that way and figure right. out what's... And, and and what you tolerate and you're like, where's the line? Where's the line where I don't want to do it? For this guy, John, who went in, who told me about this before it happened to me, he said... I, I told that guy, I said, this isn't okay. Mm-hmm. That isn't cool. That gun in the middle of the, this table is not okay. It's, uh, it's ridiculous. It's, in, it's supposed to intimidate me. And, and I guess the JD guy said to him, what are you, some kind of pussy? Yeah. And just called John on all of this stuff. And John was like, yeah, yeah, that's what I am. I'm a pussy because I don't want a gun pointing at it's me. It's dangerous. When I have worked for you all week mm-hmm. and I am expecting my pay pay me and let me out of here. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, it's not just women. It's no, no, no. It's, I, it's I don't the, think it's just women. The but industry I also think is that, run by crazy people. But, and I, but I also think like what every time that I've had to say no to something, mm-hmm. that was something that I would go down to a level that, be, that wasn't me. I oh. take full, complete responsibility for anything that's like happened in when my someone, life. Someone has been broken and has, has created this weird situation where you've had to confront them and say, you can't treat me like that. Or if you've d- gone down to their level. Or I've let them, or I've fed into it, or I've said it's okay, I can handle it, or I can take it, or something oh, any on my end. Of level, okay. Some something on my end was the reason why it's so hard for me is because when I have to say that's not acceptable, you cannot treat me that way. I have no idea what the next thing is. It's never a. It's All never. Right. All right. It's never a. Oh, I'm going to do this instead. And so the next step is. I have no right. idea. Well, All I, I know is I'm removing that. That's, you know what, that's because that's all there is. But it's anybody- a leap of faith that you have to take, which I think, I think that's true of absolutely everyone. And I think you're completely great. You're, you're so right. Cause and that's I, what has to be done. You, Cause there's no trade. People think if they can trade it off or anything, but there is no trade off to it. <laughs> there is no, tra- you are, you are in Indiana Jones and the last crusade when he takes the step. But every time the- I do it, guess what happens? What happens? I am given something you know so why? amazing. Because right underneath you. Is this is the staircase? Is oh. it is the bridge? When Harrison Ford takes that step, that bridge is right underneath him because he's like, it's a leap of faith, and that's what that is. And you have to know that when you're being mistreated or when you're being taken advantage of in some some way or another, or or you feel like you're in danger. Mm-hmm. Uh, danger <laughs> is a big one because most people don't. They pretend that the danger, like the guy with the gun saying you're a pussy, it's like yeah. that's how people get murdered. Like yeah, that's, that's how horrible. that's how those things accidentally go off. All the time. Right. And so John uh, Bush sitting on the other side of the room. I love John Bush. John Bush is awesome. I love John Bush. He's hilarious. Uh, Sue Costello, thank you for being on the Dork Forest. Thank you for having me. This is me. the fastest hour ever. It was. Yes, nice that's work. good. Yeah, that's a compliment, right? It totally is. <laughs> totally is. Yay. Thanks for tuning in, folks. See you next time. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh my god. Thank we you. why don't we just call that as the end of the show?